Hello, this is the first year blood pressure Roski station that we're going to have a look at today. Um, and all you're expected to do is just take a, a, a systolic and diastolic pressure in, um, in, in the arm of, uh, it will be one of, the, one of the second year students who will be volunteering, or it may be one of the members of staff if we, we don't get enough volunteers sometimes. Uh, the equipment you need is going to be a stethoscope and a sphygma manometer, of which there are a couple of different types. So we've actually got, this is a, a stethoscope that you'd be expected to be able to use. Um, now stethoscopes, when you put them into your ears, the earpieces go forward and downwards into the, um, into the ear sockets, not backwards. So um, they fit in, uh, fit in like this. And then you've actually got, it's quite difficult for me to hear with this in, in my ears, but you've got this um, part of the stethoscope. Now, if you touch the membrane when it's open, it'll be super loud in your ear. Just a tiny touch and it'll be loud. And if you twist it the opposite way, it turns the membrane off and it won't be loud. So you need to make sure that you've actually got it open and it's super loud so that's the I'll just take that out for a second so that's the stethoscope part of the uh, equation and then we've got uh, sigma manometers of which there are a couple of different kinds um, and the key to these um, are that you actually get the the inflatable bell of the cuff against the patient now, sphygma manometers um, will actually show you where to place the artery. So there'll be something here. It's actually in uh, Italian here. It says arteria. Oh, oh, there is an artery there as well, which is in English, but it's in several languages. Um, and you point that towards the artery that you're going to be occluding. So in this case, it's going to be the brachial artery here. So you're going to put it on in this direction. Now... Um, this particular cuff does show on the inside that the patient is on the inside. So it should be kind of idiot proof really. So you actually put it on and it should be, it's a little bit twisted this one, so it's looking up a bit. But you pop it on and it should just go into place like that. doesn't matter if it's tight, it's going to get tight anyway when you actually uh, inflate the cuff. So I'm just getting it slightly untangled. And here you can see that you've got, um, it fits into the palm of your hand and your thumb um, hits this button here. So you inflate it by squeezing the bell against the palm of your hand. If you squeeze it any other way, you might pull off this, uh, this part. Um, but um, this is how you ought to hold this particular probe. So putting those two things together, I'm going to put the earpieces in, pointing forwards and downwards into my ear sockets. And I've got my, just making sure that that's open. You can place that against the pulse. Now, to find the radial pulse, it should be quite easy to find on um, one of the uh, second years. The radial pulse comes from this side of the thumb and it goes upwards onto the onto this side of the arm and it's quite nice and easy. It should be bounding quite strongly against your fingers here, which is great. So once you've found it, you can pop that into there. You can get the patient to hold it for you if you like. So if you want to put your fingers at the side, and what you're going to want them to do is not put the finger over the back of this, so on, on either side. So the patient can help you with this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to inflate the cuff until the pulse in the wrist disappears. So, and you'll see the needle sort of increasing. Okay, and what you're actually listening for when you're doing this test 
is you can hear the what are known as corrupt cough sounds. And basically, it's the thudding of the blood as it's hitting the uh, stethoscope end, uh, and it sounds like a dull thud. It's sort of a doof, doof. This only happens when you're in the range between the diastolic and the systolic sound. So if you put your stethoscope on and you start listening before you inflate the cuff, you won't hear anything. And also, if you've inflated it above the level of the systolic pressure, you'll have occluded the blood and there won't be any blood coming through. So it's only between the range of the um, systolic and the diastolic that you'll hear the blood squirting through. And that's what you're picking up on the sound, that blood tapping against the stethoscope. And then you'll be expected to give a reading. So the reading that I got here was 125 over 80. And then you'd be expected to interpret that, whether you felt that was a normal range, or whether it was abnormal, and discuss that with the tutor, which you should get from your, your notes. And obviously, blood pressure increases slightly with age. Um, it is very a, per, a, a very personal thing. Uh, some people have higher blood pressures, and you're really, again, being expected to do a resting blood pressure, really. Okay, this is a slightly different sigma manometer, uh, and what we've got here is we've got a wheel. So, essentially, as you're looking at it, clockwise closes the valve, and anti-clockwise opens the valve as you're looking at it. Um, some people say righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Um, essentially. So in order to inflate it, you need to turn it clockwise like this. Um, and then again, it shows you where to point it against the artery. Um, this is to make this inflating bell press against the arm. So we put that on there like that. Again, doesn't need to be too tight. Um, and here, this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the pressure um, and I'm going to um, be explaining just at which point the, um, the sounds are appearing. Um, so again, the stethoscope going forwards and downwards into the ears. Just turning the bell on so that it feels... I'm just going to, sometimes it'll just sit in place. So I've closed the valve and I'm going to increase it. I cannot hear any sounds at the moment. Well, it makes my voice sound rather weird and echoey. I'm going to pump up. You can see the cuff going up. Here I can start to hear the sounds just at this point. If you look at the needle, you'll see the needle flicking backwards and forwards. So the sound's just coming in just at this point. You can just about see the needle just flickering a little bit. It's just over 120. It is possible to go up and down a little bit around this point. just to get accurate. And that time it was coming in about 124. Super loud now, that sound. Sounding at 70 there, just under 70. So your blood pressure's coming down during this assessment, which is good. <laughs> there you go. So this is an automated cuff. You, you may see these relatively easy to use. You're probably thinking, why don't we use these all the time instead of having to go through doing a manual one? Um, one of the reasons you're doing a manual one is because you're going to be expected to do ankle brachial pressure indices, which require manual. They don't work with, with these because you're going to be using them in conjunction with a, um, with a Doppler. Um, but these can be relatively useful um, and people often have them at home now and, and testing at home because very often you find that um, 
in uh, medical settings, you often get abnormal white coat hypertension um, and you don't get reliable readings. So maybe doing them in your home environment is a little bit better. These are relatively easy to use in that you put them over the arm and you just fasten them up. Um, again, getting the, getting the bell of the cuff just over the, over the artery. And this time, all you need to do with this is simply turn it on and press. And the machine does all the work for you. So it's 127 over 79, which is pretty close. Funnily enough, if you do it, I have one of these at home, and if I do it three times, it'll make quite a bit of difference. It goes lower each time you do it. Um, and it, it is just about relaxing and, um, and things. Um, so they reckon you should probably do, do it a couple of times. And... Some, of the, some of the common problems that you can have with doing this is maybe getting the cuff on the wrong way around, but do get familiar with the cuffs and the equipment that you're going to use. You get plenty of opportunities to practice in clinic. Just make sure that if you've got it on backwards, you'll hear a crunching sound as the cuff comes off and loosens itself. Um, and of course, in an OSCE, that can be a bit, you've got to set it all up again. Um, generally speaking, this particular OSCE, you've got plenty of time, so time isn't usually an issue. So if it goes wrong, you've got plenty of time to regain your, your, your thoughts and things. The other thing is just getting on the right side of the arm, just remembering that you've got the pulse on the uh, thumb side going up and diagonally across and the brachial pulse just being on this side. Uh, you should be able to feel it first, uh, and if you get the bell in the wrong place, you might not hear those sounds. The other thing that people sometimes panic with is because they can't hear the sounds before it's inflated. But don't worry, this is just going to be within the range. And I think looking at the needle, it can really help you to know whether you should be hearing those sounds. If the needle's flickering, uh, you should probably hear those sounds. Um, I think some people are very low frequency sounds. Um, and you do want to make sure that you've had plenty of practice of hearing what you're expected to hear. Um, and if you're having problems with that, speak to one of the, one of the lecturers and we'll, we'll have a look and just make sure that you're picking that up. Um, but otherwise, relatively straightforward station. Um, and uh, don't think there's too many things that can go wrong with this one.